On November 1st of the year of our Lord, 1950, Pope Pius XII, in decreeing this dogma of the Assumption of Our Lady, wrote in Munificentissimus Deus, we pronounce, declare, and define it to be a divinely revealed dogma that the Immaculate Mother of God, the Ever-Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory. So what is it that results in this sublime honor of the Blessed Virgin? Why is she granted this privilege? Why has God so exalted his lowly handmaid? Well, theologically speaking, the assumption is the natural conclusion, the natural consequence of the Immaculate Conception. She's free from corruption of the grave because her flesh and her spirit are totally free from corruption. And why was it necessary that Our Lady be free from sin? Well, because as we are reminded uh, very uh, dramatically in the reading from the Apocalypse, that she is the new Ark of the Covenant. God not only descends upon her as he did upon the old Ark of the Covenant, but he descends into her, taking flesh from her and, to be clear, from her alone. And God would not take to himself, God cannot take to himself, that which is tainted. And so he, and here I'm going to quote in bits from uh, Pope Pius IX's decree in Epiphany's days on the Immaculate Conception, God, by a singular grace and privilege, in view of the merits of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the human race, preserved the Most Blessed Virgin Mary in the first instant of her conception from all stain of original sin. The flesh, then, that was assumed as part of the human nature uh, by the incarnate Word was the flesh of Mary. She gave him that flesh which would in turn be made present sacramentally in the consecrated bread and wine. Regarding this relationship between Our Lady and the Most Blessed Sacrament, I just wanted to share a couple of lines here from Father Lavasic's book, the basic book on the Eucharist regarding this theme. When you see Mary in Bethlehem lovingly pressing to her heart her child, her God, it is the future Eucharistic Christ. When you see Mary offering him to the Heavenly Father in the temple for our salvation, it is the same Jesus you look upon as victim on our altars, whom you receive into your soul as a guest in Holy Communion, whom you adore as your friend in the tabernacle. He is all yours because Mary gave her consent to become his mother. Jesus in the Holy Eucharist is Mary's gift to you. Mary's heart is always conformable to her son's will. Having loved her sinful children so much as a sacrifice for them, her only son in his passion, she loved them to the end by giving them the Holy Eucharist. Every day she renews her gift generously because to each sacrifice of her son, she gives her consent. Each consecration is her gift to us. This gift of her heart entitles her to be called Our Lady of the Most Blessed Sacrament. Our Lady's offering of the bloody sacrifice of Calvary is the perfect model for your offering Holy Mass. Ask Our Lady of the Most Blessed Sacrament to help you share actively in Holy Mass by sharing in her spirit. Ask Our Lady of the Most Blessed Sacrament to teach you to prove your love for Jesus by visiting him frequently in his tabernacle home, where he lives as the best friend you have upon earth, ready to console and strengthen you in your trials. It is the Eucharistic work of Mary to draw souls to Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament. Since the Eucharist is the source from which the grace of redemption continually flow to mankind, what an ardent longing must burn in the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary for the flourishing of devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. Choose Mary as your model of Eucharistic devotion. Offer Holy Mass, receive Holy Communion, and visit Jesus in the tabernacle in union with her in the spirit in which she herself did so. By the way, there is even a traditional feast day in honor of Our Lady of the Most Blessed Sacrament, and that was May 13th, which I don't think is a coincidence of the day that Our Lady first appears in Fatima. 
So regarding our relationship with Christ in the Eucharist, remember that our union with Christ, as we've been speaking about, in this life is completed through the most blessed sacrament. We are united to Christ, not merely in spirit, not merely in our hearts, but in a physical way in his flesh. And if that is the case for us sinful, weak, unfaithful human beings, we can only dream then of what union existed between our blessed Lord and the woman who gave him flesh. Which then brings us back to today's mystery and why I'm speaking about the Eucharist in relation to the Assumption. Again, the purpose of all things, I quizzed the other two masses, I won't quiz you. The purpose of everything is union with God through Christ in his mystical body of church. And this union is ultimately complete, it's ultimately realized only in heaven. So what we celebrate today is a fulfillment of that union which the incarnate Son of God had with his Blessed Mother. When she, who is the ark of his might, as King David says in the Psalms, has been taken up to his resting place. And we honor her today in whom God has done great things and raised above all creatures to sit in the throne at his right hand where she reigns as queen. So may we then continue to praise God in all of his marvels, especially this jewel of creation, the ever-Virgin Mary, who is his mother and ours. <laughs>